Jack Spade back here with you, High Noon Leatherworks, for another leather adventure. And today is going to be the conclusion of the Kukri knife sheath. So come on in, let's get started. So I'm going to add a few things to this project. Let's take the knife out of here. And you notice how nice and smooth that knife goes in and out of there. So, got a real nice sheath. Fits great. It's going to hold that knife in there secure. Now, what I want to do, uh, first of all, we need to put our rivets back here in our belt loop. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Um, grab a piece of scrap leather that we can put behind here to punch our holes with. So I'll get my smallest punch that I use for my rivets. And then I want to mark them because I do want them to be uniform. I want them to look nice. And I'm going to put them an inch apart. And I'm going to put them down far enough to where you can have a pretty decent size not, uh, belt on your sheath. So I'm just marking them with this stylus. Just putting a little divot in there so I'll know where to punch my holes and then I'll put this scrap piece Quite a bit. This looks like my punch could probably be sharpened a little bit. And I'll tell you what, I probably need to put something. I've got so many thicknesses of leather here, even though I've got it on my granite. Probably the best thing to do is go ahead and open that back up and so I'm not hitting, trying to hit through all those thicknesses of leather. That went right through, so. Alright, much better. Here's my two holes. And then I'll close it back and I'll look, kind of give myself an idea. Here, look, a two inch belt will fit in there, so that's plenty big enough. And again, I'll take my stylus and go through the holes I just punched and mark on the back side where I have to punch my holes. Now on here, I can open the flap up and put a piece of leather in between there. So slide a piece of leather inside that where I'm going to punch my holes. There's 
one. Make sure that piece of leather's in there good. And there's the second one. So I can pull out my scrap piece and then my holes line up. So the next thing I want to do is take my rivet hardware and I'll need two male and two female. There's my rivets. I need my rivet setter. And then my mallet. So on this, I'll put my first rivet through from the inside. Again, this is these rivets are kind of small to handle, especially when you're doing it from the inside. I may need to uh, get a little assistance with a uh, small needle nose pliers. That way, I can hold on to it a little bit better. and I can get a better angle. And then I can put my slide my setter in there on top of my rivet and once I get that setter on there it's not going to come off because it's such a tight fit in there and I can put my flap down Put my female rivet on there, the cap, push it down, take my setter, Make sure I get that set really well since it's back underneath there. I don't want that coming out. I could take my second rivet. This one will be a little easier. It's closer to the outer edge. I can put it in. Put my setter on. Flip it over. Put the cap on. Push it down, take the setter, set my 
my rivet. Double check the inside. And then there's my rivets for my belt loop. Nice and snug so it won't flop around on your belt. Uh, I've got a belt here. Here's a belt that basket weave belt that I made. And this is a one and a half inch belt, which is a pretty wide belt. And you can see that slides right through there with a little bit of room. So a good one and three quarter inch belt, but uh, I'd say one and a half is probably going to be about right. And that goes in and out of there really easy. Alright, so let's go ahead to the next thing I'm going to do, which is this is what I decided to add to this. Put my hardware up. Double check the knife fit after we put those rivets in there. Just slides in there so nice. So perfect fit. Again, once that knife's in there, those snaps are down. It's just so snug and it's not gonna move around, it's not gonna fall out. So that worked out great. Now my next thing to finish this up is I wasn't going to do this and the customer he pretty much gave me full reign of what I wanted to do to it because he said he wanted it custom um, he's a big avid deer hunter so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a big buck stamp and I'm going to put a big buck stamp right down here at the toe. Then I'm going to do some decorative stamping around the stitching line just add just to add a little bit to it I don't want to do the whole surface or anything I just want to add a little bit to this project so I haven't put any uh, sheen or anything on the surface of this yet so I should be able to case it okay it's just been died so I can pretty much case it just like I would if it hadn't have been and I'm only going to bring the decorative up to here I'm not going to go around the snaps or anything so I'm just going to case this just as I would if it wasn't dyed and I just noticed one of my snaps a little loose so I'll have to tighten that up so I'm just going to case this with a little water I'm not trying to soak it down I'm just working that water in just so I can get my stamping in there let that sit just for a minute wipe off any excesses on the surface kinda 
let that start coming back a little bit to that dyed original dyed color once that color starts coming back the where we put the deer stamp is going to be really important to how this ends up looking So you want to make sure you get it exactly where you want it. And again, because it's going to through that two thicknesses of the leather going to make it a little tougher to get a good image in there but I want to make sure that I get a good set on that you can see that deer head and then I will take another stamping tool and again I'm not trying to take away from anything of this sheath I'm not trying to overwhelm it with any kind of design just want to give it a subtle highlight so I'll follow that stitch line with this veining stamp and again doing it this way I'm not putting it super deep I'm just giving it a little bit of detail and then I'll get my cedar tool and I'll come back and I'll go right between where those veining stamps meet and hit it with my cedar tool. show you as soon as I get around here to the end and gives it just a little bit of detail You can see around the edge gives it just a little bit of detail and that runs all the way down and then into the deer head down at the bottom. So 
gives it a nice look. Again, the fit is awesome. Turned out great. Now all I have to do to finish this project off is to put some sheen on it. And that'll protect it. Plus it'll give it a little bit of shine. And then we can finish this and get it to the, uh, the owner. And I think he'll be very happy with that. So that concludes the Kukri knife sheath build. As you can see, we've got it finished. Got our stamping done. Got our rivets in for our belt loop. Got our maker's mark. We've got our edges sealed with beeswax, nice and smooth. And we've got a nice, smooth working sheath. So I think the customer is going to be very, very happy. And that's definitely going to protect his custom made kukri knife. So thanks for coming along on this series. Uh, next episode, we'll be starting a new project. So not absolutely sure what that's going to be, but I do have a uh, shoulder holster that I have to do for a uh, 44 uh, black powder gun. So that might be very interesting. We may start that project next. So come on back next episode, next week, and... We'll go ahead and get started on a new project. Thanks for coming along on this one, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please, like I always say, like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.